and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we get to talk with Ron Iacobucci from the Mass Hire Quincy Career Center. First, though, we check out the weather and the news for you this morning. Currently in Quincy, cloudy out there. It's 39 degrees right now. We've got rain on the way this afternoon, probably about 4 or 5 o'clock. It'll start to roll in. It'll be mild temperatures in the uh, mid-40s, and we won't we'll cool down that much tonight. The rain will continue. It could be heavy at times. There's actually a flood watch in effect. Lows tonight only in the uh, lower 40s. The rain continues tomorrow. Some downpours are possible, but look at the temperatures tomorrow up into the mid 50s. All the snow is going to get washed away for sure. Much better on Sunday. Sun and clouds right around 50 degrees and starting to turn colder again for Monday with the partial sunshine and a high barely 40 on Monday. 39 clouds in Quincy right now. In the news today, well, the state is awarding the Quincy Center Redevelopment Project another $2 million grant. Governor Charlie Baker announced that grant from the state's Mass Works program in Quincy Center last week while praising the administration for their vision for the future. And part of the reason why we have been here a number of times to issue a variety of awards all of which are competitive, by the way, and all of which um, go through a pretty aggressive and pretty um, thorough screening process. Part of the reason why we've been here so often is because there's a lot going on here, and there's a lot going on here uh, that we believe will dramatically improve the quality of life for the people of Quincy, will dramatically improve the city's capacity to deliver services, and will dramatically improve the Commonwealth. And, um, and, and it's your vision and your energy and the energy and the vision of your team uh, that has a lot to do with why the Lieutenant Governor and I are continually coming back here to join you in announcements on projects like this. Um, this is a, a $2 million MaxWorks grant, but if you think about this grant and some of the other grants that we've um, provided to the city through these processes, in the end, they're part of billions of dollars in investment in Quincy and in the South Shore. And I think in many ways, uh, these are great opportunities for us to leverage state resources and city resources to do really good things. This grant will be used to help pay to extend Cliveden Street to the new 712 space parking garage at the former Hancock parking lot. Cliveden Street will also be extended to the Bergen Parkway over what will be the new General's Bridge, also being funded by the state. Previously, Quincy Center also received $3.8 million from the state's MassWorks program. Well, a panel of transportation experts says safety is not the top priority at the MBTA. In a report issued this week, the panel said it found numerous areas where safety was being compromised on MBTA buses and trains and that the T's approach to safety is questionable. The T hired the panel following the red line derailment in Dorchester back in June that disrupted service for months. The report blames safety lapses on leadership turnover, cost-cutting efforts, and a lack of trust and fear of retribution in the workplace among T employees. The panel did find that the T performs the necessary functions to con be considered relatively safe, but said that many areas need immediate attention. The legislature just this past week approved $32 million for more improvements to the T. The Norfolk County Sheriff's Office says they've been able to collect over 1,000 winter coats during their first annual winter coat drive held at six local high schools. Sheriff Jerry McDermott says students at Avon, Dedham, North Quincy, Randolph, Tri-County Vocational, and Westwood High Schools donated the coats back in October and November. Anton's Cleaners and Braintree Cleaners have agreed to dry clean the coats before they're donated to local social service organizations. Two Quincy businessmen were recently honored at the 26th annual Mayor's Good Scout Breakfast here in Quincy. Scout supporters gathered at the Granite Links Golf Club to present the Lifetime Achievement Award to Tony Agniti of Agniti Insurance and the Good Scout Award to Jimmy Lang of the J.P. Fuji Group. Lang said that he owed his success to the people that believed in him. I never thought I would be recognized for trying to do the right thing, so thank you. I believe there are many, many good people that does the right thing every day. 
I'm still learning and growing. It is my hope that JP Fuji Group will be able to do more as our business grows. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, the Spirit Adventure Council, Boy Scouts of America, the Selection Committee, but this award really belongs to my grandparents, my parents, my team, my customers, anyone that has ever helped me, and my very understanding wife, Jennifer. It is because of all the people that are in my life that I can do what I do. Thank you, happy holidays. God bless the Boy Scouts, God bless Quincy, God bless America. That breakfast is held each year to benefit the Boy Scouts of America Spirit of Adventure Council. Now that you are up to date with weather and news, let's check out our programming lineup for you for later on today here on Quincy Access Television. And we'll start with a replay of this program currently in Quincy today at 5 o'clock. Right after that at 6 p.m., sound advice with attorney Tom Williams. Hello folks, I am attorney Tom Williams and welcome to Sound Advice. Then currently in Quincy, the interviews at 6.30 featuring the Quincy Salvation Army tonight. The recent Fair Saturday finale concert at 7 o'clock. At 9 o'clock we go on the road with Jazzy Bill. Tonight it's episode 7. Followed at 11 with Democracy Now! Watch Channel 9 every day. You'll learn about different Quincy City departments and committee activities. That starts at 5.30 with Quincy In Focus. A media advisory at 6 p.m. We talk about tomorrow's Wreaths Across America ceremony. FYI from the Quincy Health Department at 6.30. Tonight it's all about this year's flu season. This week's Quincy Board of License Commissioners meeting at 7 o'clock on Channel 9. 7.30 meets the author. Their it's episode 8 Copies this evening. Copies of books are available for checkout at the Thomas Crane Public Library. And at 8 o'clock, Studio Sessions, episode 7 tonight, the Boston Guitar Orchestra Holiday Selection. A Good Deeds quarterly update at 8.30 from the Norfolk County Registry of Deeds. And a media advisory at 9 o'clock, that full Mass Works ceremony for you. Find out what's happening at your library for the rest of December at 9.30. You get a uh, complete program schedule, just go to our website. It's qatv.org and click on Program Schedule. Don't forget, too, to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and check out our weekly ad in the Quincy Sun. Coming up, we'll take a look at a few of the current events and activities that are featured right now in our electronic bulletin board on Channel 8 for you to know about. Please stay tuned. We're back with you in just one minute. back. Here is a check of some of the current events and activities we're featuring right now on our electronic bulletin board on Channel 8 for you to know about. Overdue books and other materials from the Thomas Crane Library in Quincy can be returned find free all the way through January 3rd. So all outstanding overdue charges will also be forgiven if the materials are returns to any branch location that is a holiday gift to you, but it does not include lost or damaged items. Don't forget the Quincy Farmers Market has a winter location now. It's inside the South Shore YMCA on Coddington Street. This is on Fridays from 1130 to 3, right through February the 14th. Visit their website, quincyfarmersmarket.com, for all the details. 
Quincy Parks Department's Environmental Treasures Program inviting you to a winter solstice stroll next Saturday on the winter solstice, December 21st. It'll be at 2 o'clock. You'll meet at Fenno Street and Andrews Road and explore the Salt Marsh Trail for a tranquil jaunt. Wear the appropriate footwear and clothing, please. Call 617-472-0799 for all the details. And just a reminder that letters to Santa can still be dropped off in that special mailbox at the Hancock Adams Comet in Quincy Center. No postage necessary. And if you have an event or an activity you'd like to promote, visit our website, qatv.org. Download a bulletin board request form. Just fill it out and send it in. Get your message up here on Channel 8, too. Coming up, we have a chat with Ron Yakabuchi of the Mass Hire Quincy Career Center. That's next. Welcome back. We're so pleased to welcome back to the program, but although it's been a while, Ron Yakabuchi's here from the now Mass Hire Quincy Career Center yes. with uh, breaking news, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew you'd want me to say that to you. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Thanks for having me sure. back. It's, it's um, a lot of things have happened since uh, the last time. It we has were, been a we while, actually. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. We have a new career center. Yes. So... Um, well, so where do we go? Uh, well, Mayor Tom Koch obviously has been designated by the governor to be the CEO of our workforce region. And on his behalf, I, I oversee that, that, um, that work. And um, really the most visible piece of that is the Career Center. Right. And uh, within this past year, we've opened up a new one in Quincy. Okay. Uh, moved away from 152 Parking Way uh, and over to 1515 Hancock Street in Suite 101. Okay. And it's a great brand new facility um, and uh, we're still seeing approximately uh, 200 people a week that come in to file their unemployment claims. Wow. Um, you know, we're there to serve people not just that are unemployed but also that are employed mm -hmm. that are looking to be get better jobs. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be expanding those hours next year uh, to be open uh, in the evening so that we can accommodate uh, the, the workforce that's, that's currently working and give them opportunities to come in and use the services and programs that we have. Um, but that's our mission, is to get employers connected to uh, job seekers mm -hmm. and put people back to work. And Where exactly on Hancock Street is that new location? We're in what one? used to be the old Remix Learners Building okay. on the corner of Cliveden and uh, Hancock, okay. which will be kind of a, an, another exciting pathway over yeah. the bridge and connecting into the garage and so forth. Right. So we're in a good, good spot. A lot of development that's going to happen on the Ross Way yes. and be behind us. Um, and we're, I think, better physically located to accommodate uh, people um, coming off the tee and so right. forth, and uh, and with the new parking garage that's going to open up, it's, that's going to be tremendous. Sure. So it's so it very accessible yeah. for people. Is it a, actually a city department, or how does it how does it work? Well, that's a good question. Uh, it's it's actually it's a combination of um, of, uh, of partners uh, that work in state government as well as you know we're we're the operator of the career center. And we also I handle all the fiscal uh, matters that involve the money coming into workforce development. From the and then state? The, and then equi yeah, from the state, okay. from, the, from the Department of Labor. Okay. And then, of course, you have the, um, you know, the, the workforce board that the mayor appoints yes. that, that sets policy and oversight for the operation of these centers. Yes, I think Dean Rizzo um, is. Dean Rizzo is the executive yeah. director of that. Yeah, correct. Um, so so I, I oversee the department, which kind of brings all those t together okay. to work in harmony <laughs> yeah. as a team yeah. you know, to make, make things happen for people uh, and uh, as I said you know the, the work the the career centers are the most public face of what we do mm -hmm. and um, you know under Governor Baker's leadership uh, they all get rebranded in the past year as mass hire so we have approximately 30 of these centers all around the Commonwealth oh. they, they exist all around the country oh. um, but you know, the, but they they now all have the same look and feel, so it's a better connection, gotcha. uh, which is I think is important. A lot of a lot of them operated. We do a lot of the same things, but uh, they had different names, and it was very confusing for people. So now we're branded as Mass Hire. Um, you know, we 
we have uh, in the career center. I'll hold this up. I know yeah. people can take a look at that. But um, you know, we're very proud of hold what that we up higher, right? hold it up a little higher. Yeah, okay, yeah, there yeah. we go. So, so we have our own, you know, uh, Green Monster scoreboard. <laughs> okay. uh, a lot of the numbers that are on that scoreboard um, represent uh, various important milestones in our history. So okay. there's some significance to those numbers. But the more important numbers are the ones we keep beside the scoreboard, which show, you know, the number of job seekers we serve, mm -hmm. the number of businesses we've served, um, the number of uh, veterans we've helped, mm. um, the connections we've made. Uh, you know, that's that's really important and we want to be able to demonstrate to people our success and our track record mm -hmm. and um, I think that's important to hopefully get people in and motivate them to want to work with us and we could help them um, you know in terms of getting back to work or improving the work that they have so well I mean is, are they still needed you know unemployment is well, at historical <laughs> low levels the economy is booming um, oh yeah well you know okay so <laughs> what do you eyes, so, so I'm rolling my eyes uh, Joe that yeah well so the unemployment rate is low it's at an all-time low but it's not a true indicator of what's really happening out there okay it's more the participation rate um, so you so when people f stop collecting unemployment we stop counting them but they're still not working. Okay. We see those people, you know, mostly uh, uh, long-term unemployed. Uh, we're, we're, we're feeling, um, you know, really the pressure now with people that have greater barriers that are coming in yes. because they're having difficulty finding work. So we get a lot of folks from DTA. We get a lot of um, uh, j veterans that have been out there for, for a while. Mm. Uh, some of the, you know, more mature workers that, that were working. Um, it's, it's more of a challenge to deal with that population, but it, it's not a true indication of really what's happening out there because you have that higher participation rate, or I should say lower participation rate. So you've got a lot of people that still aren't working but aren't being counted. So that's not a real good indication. So what's you, you, what do you, you see the true unemployment rate then? I mean, people, you, you're looking at maybe, it, it varies, like, so different populations, youth, the unemployment rate is a little higher. Okay. Mature workers, the unemployment rate is a little higher. Okay. Um, you know, you, you talk about the participation rate that I mentioned. Um, you know, you, you, you have a, a, a situation, too, where, you know, we, we talk about we're creating a lot of jobs. Yeah. It was the most recent jobs report that came out, 260,000 yeah. jobs were created. Yeah. Fantastic. But what kind of jobs are we creating? Mm -hmm. We're creating... We're not creating good jobs. We're creating part-time jobs. We're creating jobs that don't pay well. Okay. So we need to be creating good jobs. So that's another indication of, you know, well, maybe things aren't as great as we think they are. So a better question might be, what's the underemployment rate, <laughs> right, folks? Are you looking at probably a very high percentage, yeah. seven, eight, nine percent, maybe yeah. even more, depending upon what category you're in. Right. Um, so you know, we're looking at that. We 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 talk now about because everything works in cycles. Yep. So we're talking now about becoming recession ready uh, because that cycle's probably going to hit. We, when, we don't know. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of indicators that are out there that could potentially trigger something between the tariff situation, yep. between the tax cuts, between the debt that keeps rising. Yep. I mean, there are bubbles that could that could trigger you know, that economy going in, in a different direction. It came up in discussions at the State House just this past week, actually, yeah. where some economists were warning, yeah. you know, don't spend the, don't all the rainy day, spend all the money, rainy day uh, money because the downturn's coming. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, so, you know, it's, 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 it's a, it, things are changing, too. I mean, we're talking not only about getting recession ready, but we're talking about um, the future of work. Mm. Um, you know, we've, we've, everything has evolved from that industrial revolution to, you know, automation to uh, information and technology. And now we're going into the next wave, which is the artificial intelligence, okay. the robots that are coming. You know, if we're not preparing our workforce for the changes that are going to happen, then we're again at a disadvantage, mm -hmm. and that's that's you know part of the problem we need to be dealing with so and how need do to address. You do that? I mean, I, I, do you team well, up with as, as I'm sitting here speaking here right now, yeah. we where our whole staff is going through a training session right now that talks about just that. Is that right? And we're getting into skills mapping, something called skills mapping, so we could take people that have and examine what their skills and experience has been and figure out what the next step may be okay. for them. The difference too is also you know in providing um, uh, training for for folks, yep. and we. Have have a, a you know a significant number of training dollars that we could um, uh, invest in workers so we can improve their skills so we can hopefully get them better jobs okay. and that's what the whole thing is about so help them pay for schooling perhaps we do or yes correct do? yeah okay. we do yeah exactly and exactly what institutions you know, what uh, we're partnering right now with Quincy College okay. uh, we've opened up a new career center down there we're co-located with them oh. uh, they could be a potential vendor I mean most of the other community colleges colleges that exist around the Commonwealth uh, you know are, are, are better positioned 
to uh, be flexible to design whatever training is, is necessary okay. uh, as we identify it. You know, we've got some significant layoffs that are coming out of State Street, probably another 300 before the end of this year. Really? Um, before we're the dealing end of this year? Before the end of this year. Okay. There have been 1,500 total, right. and we've seen a lot of those workers coming into our career okay. center. Um, we're dealing with the energy situation down in Plymouth, uh, where there are 300 workers that were laid off. That's right. Uh, yeah. And we were able to uh, successfully uh, get a grant to help um, you know, with some of that. And most of those workers are trade certified. So they get additional unemployment benefits as well as additional dollars that we could spend on them to oh. retrain them into other jobs. Okay. Um, and so that's you know, what we're, we're engaged in right yeah. now. Yeah, but how long does that process usually take, Ronnie, the retraining process? It uh, could take anywhere from uh, a short six week to eight week certification yeah. program up to a year or two. It could, okay. Um, when Quincy Medical Center closed mm -hmm. um, a few years ago, we put together a, a proposal with UMass Boston. So, you know, a lot of those nurses that lost their jobs had tremendous experience, sure. but they didn't have the four year bachelor degree. Okay. They had associate's degrees. Okay. So we were able to engineer a program where we could, in one year, mm -hmm. because UMass accepted all of their credits mm -hmm. and gave them some life experience credits, Good. Yeah. we paid approximately $12,000 and we got them their one year of of education, yeah. which gave them their four-year degree, wow, okay. which got them back into the workforce. That so that's tremendous. that's the kind of thing that we try to put together. Yeah. So who is eligible to utilize the services of the career center? A anybody can come in. Okay. I mean, basically, you start by just attending a workshop that kind of orientates you to what the services and programs are. You become a member, mm -hmm. and then you you begin your your journey from there. Okay. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Yeah. Uh, most of the folks that do come in, though, that we serve are folks that are uh, on unemployment because there are certain requirements that sort of drive them into the career center yes. because they have to come in and do a seminar. They I have see. to come in and do a oh, review okay. that's mandated as part of being able to collect their benefits. Oh, really? But oh. yeah, so, so, so you've got that, you know, sort of base population that mm -hmm. comes in, but mm -hmm. we're open and accessible to anybody that wants to come in and work with them. Okay. Um, Staff-wise, you know, who do you have at the, at the center who's helping these folks? Uh, we, we, we have about 30 um, employees that wow. are at the center, and okay. it's a mix of some city employees as well as some state employees from various agencies. Okay. And so we're all integrated, uh, working as a team, um, and they have various, you know, experience and skills as counselors, career counselors, mm -hmm. that help people navigate you know, through uh, what, what they have to go through yeah. to, to get back to work. Do you also help, I mean, it, I mean, a resume I, seems kind of, uh, you know, passe these days, but well, it's no, still important, it's right? It's a gateway. Yeah. Yeah, and preparing them for the interview and, and yeah. helping them with their job search and and uh, and all those things associated with getting them back to work. Yeah. Um, um, career fairs, are you still involved with Yeah, so we have a business fairs? engagement team, and okay. they deal with the employers and try to meet their needs. Mm -hmm. And so we do a lot of things. We've partnered with Gatehouse Media oh. to, to run job fairs. Uh, We've done a lot of recruitments. Right now, we're in the middle of hiring several thousand census workers. Oh, that's right. So that's if anybody sure. wants to work for the census, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you're flashing that, that uh, um, website or yeah. just call our main number, which is 617-745-4000, yeah. and, and connect with us, um, there's a big push on that. And I know there's a big push in Quincy to get us over the 100,000 mark. And yeah, we've they're actually opening an office in Quincy. We're, yeah. They're literally located two floors above oh. us in the same building. Okay. So yeah, we've, we've, we've helped hire many of those people uh, by recruiting through our, our career center. Okay. And we've trained many of those people, recruiting them you know, in, into our career center. Sure. And now we're working on a, on a real good push to try to hire some of those part-time seasonal workers. Uh, good pay, yeah. part-time work, so um, not a bad uh, thing if people are looking to make some extra money. Yeah, no, absolutely. Might yeah. be a retiree, perhaps? Uh, Whatever. Or a student yeah. who sure. has some time sure. on their hands? Yeah, um, absolutely. Could that, do you think, lead to something you know, bigger in the future? I mean, it could. It all depends yeah. on where you are. Yeah. I mean, you know, some people might be just looking for some additional income, right. and yeah. they might want to take on the part-time job, which is okay. Um, and some might, I mean, I don't know if there's a future in census until we wait well, another 10 years. But, right. You know, the <laughs> robots coming to our <laughs> robots door. Robots are yeah. coming to our door, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you know. They're already delivering our packages, you know, They're in some already, cases. Yeah, exactly, so, yeah. exactly. Uh, so, interesting. Yeah, well. Um, the your hours of operation now? It's yeah, we're there 8.30 to 4.30 every day. Okay. Except on Tuesday, we try to get pull our staff together for an hour and a half or so. Okay. Uh, which is important, you know, to connect and communicate and get up to date on, on things. Um, and as I said, we're trying to look into expanding into the, into the evening hours yes. also, if that's... Yeah. Uh, and you still have the Plymouth Center also? Down Plymouth? We have the Plymouth Center, operates the same way. Okay. Um, you know, we, we unfortunately, we had to sustain a number of um, significant budget cuts over the last couple of years.
because our funding is tied into the unemployment rate. Mm -hmm. So as the unemployment rate goes down, our funding goes down That's significantly. Okay. So we have to have some layoffs ourselves. Uh, but we're coming back, uh, you know, we're trying to generate additional grants like the Entergy Grant, um, and we're able to bring people on specifically for that grant to service that population. Um, and, you know, we did reduce our space, but we're in better space. Okay. So, you know, those are my goals, you know, ch change the culture of the organization, improve the technology of the organization, um, and look at everything we do and how we can do it better. And I think we've really, in the last, this past year, we've really have turned the corner um, and, uh, and, are on the, and are on the right track, you know, to, to improving things. Because, you know, we, we need to get better, um, you know, given the changes that we have to go through, because we're serving a very critical population. Mm -hmm. And especially, you know, now the holiday season mm -hmm. and, you know, wishing everybody uh, well for Christmas mm -hmm. and New Year's and we're entering a new decade now, right, right. which I, I was just right. thinking about that the other day. It's yeah. a new decade. Already. Uh, yeah, already. Here we are. And, um, we'll have it's to be back in the next decade. The next okay. decade. Yeah. But it's a tough time for some people that are unemployed yes. and so yeah. forth. So, you know, you, you, and we, you know, it's, it's, it's not an easy situation, yep. you know, coming into the career center yeah. and if you're in that spot and we help people with their unemployment benefits too Good. so that's another thing that we can please come back next year absolutely all absolutely. right absolutely. thanks thank, thank you joe you're welcome appreciate it just enough time to recap the forecast for you for the rest of the day today rains arriving later on this afternoon it's milder at least into the uh, mid 40s not much of a change temperature wise tonight the rain continues all day tomorrow much nicer on sunday and a little cooler again on monday Thanks again to Aran Yakabuchi from the Mass Hire Quincy Mass Hire Career Quincy Center. Quincy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to our crew. Thank you for watching. Monday at 1130, the new president of Eastern Nazarene College, Jack Cannell, here on Currently in Quincy. We'll see you then.